don't know what Airsoft is, it's the depths. I'm not going to get into that. But uh, this presentation is going to be about securely storing private keys for application use on AWS. So I want to note that I'm not, or that we are not storing user private keys. This is for our backend applications. This can be for side projects or integrations. Uh, you might have heard one of them uh, mentioned yesterday by Rui Christensen, which was our TAP project. So, first off, application wall security. Data can be in three states. It can be at rest, it can be in use, or it can be in motion. And the moment that the key enters memory, it's vulnerable. So we have to have tools and practices around our infrastructure that allow us to uh, ensure the wallet security. So whenever we're doing trading like that. So again, once compromised, a private key and everything tied to it is gone forever. So that means tokens, our you know, our wallet, our functionality, any things that we're doing uh, is at risk. So there are four main criteria we have. We have auditability, which is can we see what happened? Can we see who accessed at what time? Uh, we have encryption. Are these keys unusable uh, when they're not being used? And I want to note the keys I'm talking about here are the keys to encrypt the data. They're not the public private keys. So this is taking. Uh, encryption keys, and then using those to encrypt and like securely safe, uh, store your private keys. And we also have need it to be easy. So if you're a developer, you don't want to be fumbling around with trying to like handle your private keys and secure them. So developers and DevOps engineers need to be able to use a tool with ease. And it needs to be permission. You need to be able to lock it down. If you can't do that, then that's not good. That's, there's too much access to it. So we have four main tools at our disposal for AWS. And the first one is key management service, the second is, is uh, secure, the secrets manager, we have the systems manager, parameter store, and we have the Kubernetes secrets. So I'll talk about each of these, but again, this is a bit more of an infrastructure talk of how we kind of like organize these. So for the key management service, its main job is to create and control the encryption keys used to encrypt data, like I had said earlier. In terms of its auditability, it integrates with other tools and provides logs, so you can easily see these logs and see what's happening. The encryption, with, or, sorry, in regards to encryption, the keys are encrypted at rest, they're not accessible, they're not visible, and it's very easy. So as soon as you make an account, there's a key ready to go by default to allow you to encrypt the data, and it's permissioned. So you can use IAM policies, key policies, and you can throw access controls on top of it. The Secrets Manager, its job is to manage secrets for applications and services. Again, it's audible, it has logs, in terms of its encryption, secrets and keys are encrypted at rest, uh, but it really shines with how easy it is to use. So instead of putting hard coding credentials inside of your applications and making them visible, it uses an API call or an SDK, uh, which makes it much easier for a developer just to like throw it in. And on top of that, the Secrets Manager also provides some additional functionality that allows you to auto-rotate your keys. And again, it's also permissioned, so you can grant permissions to individuals on perform list roles, which is also very nice. Uh, there's another one here, which is the Systems Manager Parameter Store. This is pretty akin to Ansible. I don't know if you've ever, anybody's ever used it, but there's something called Vault in Ansible, and the Systems Manager really shines with regards to the secrets that are interpolated at runtime. Uh, in terms, again, of its auditability, encryption, and permission, these are all pretty standard of, of AWS services. Um, but again, it's very easy, and most of these are just injected to the container services through environment variables, and they're never visible. The last one is Kubernetes secrets, and its job stores and manages sensitive information in Kubernetes. So you can put passwords, you can put SSH keys, you can do pretty much anything. Plain text, which eventually becomes encrypted. Um, so in terms of its auditability, it's great, it also logs, but uh, there are being problems with this, where you can actually expose secrets. And when you expose a secret inside of your log, if you're ever through logs that become vulnerable, then you know, you're kind of screwed, it's visible. Um, again, things are encrypted at rest via the EBS volume. And it's also easy, so you can attach the pods and you can inject your, your secrets to the pods. However, in terms of the permission, even though access is on a per pod basis, you have to be careful because a pod can see those secrets. And that's not good. So if, again, you'll have vulnerabilities there. Overview, KMS, as we have found, is good for general encryption management. Service manager is, again, to manage secrets and applications for services. And the parameter store is good for configuring data for deployments. And you have Kubernetes secrets, which is really good for securing sensitive data in clusters. This is documentation, I'm sure it'll be available afterwards. Uh, thank you.